Snowball Spark. You want good words? Data languages. Talk real sports with a real man. Come after me. I'm a man. I'm 40. And now, here's the be-all, end-all, know-it-all of high school, college, and pro sports. Aaron Skinny Calc with the Skinny on Sports. We're talking about practice, man. I'm the MVP. Uh, good Monday morning out there, Western Oklahoma. Welcome to the Skinny on Sports right there, right here on 98.1 FM, the Sports Animal. Glad to have you along for the next hour. Jim Traber coming up at 930. Get his thoughts on all kinds of different things going on nationally in the world of sports. We've got just bukus of high school athletics finishing up last weekend and then going into this weekend. Kind of the, the last hurrah for for high school sports is this week. So there are lots of different things to talk about on the high <clears throat> excuse me, on the high school sports docket. We'll get right to it. 225-9698 is the phone or the text line. 225-9698. Give us a call, shoot us a text. We can talk about any of those things. And whatever else might be on your mind, feel free to chime right in at 225-9698. If you're going to be outside the listening area, you can stay in touch with the show a couple of different ways. Log on to KADSAM.com or you can download the app. The app's got it all. It's got radio. It's got the Penny News. It's got Big Elk TV. I'll be over in Weatherford today and tomorrow to have some uh, video updates throughout the day from the Boys State Golf Tournament. We'll be at Edmond Memorial Thursday, first round of the State Baseball Tournament. Big Elk TV will be on the air all a week long. And then, of course, the Skinny on Sports podcast. If you missed the show entirely, Go back and check it out anywhere podcasts are. Right there on the website, kadsam.com. You're talking about all the other platforms. We are there. What's up, Jared? How are you? How was your weekend? It was busy, busy, busy. If you notice from my face, it looks like bacon. (laughs) I've been outside most of the time at at the ball fields, of course. A lot of fun, though. How was your weekend? Uh, yeah, we didn't, there was none of that. Baseball free weekend. I noticed the baseball side, there's nothing. Baseball free weekend this weekend as well. Really? As far as the, as far as Wyatt and them. And then we get back at it uh, the following week. So yeah, we just kind of hung out. Um, I played a little bit of golf. Just a little, huh? Saturday, I didn't play a full round. Went to watch Kentucky Derby. At my father-in-law's house, went and watched some Local music on Saturday night. And then yesterday I worked because I didn't do it on Saturday. Oh, well. <laughs> so I was up here for, well, our church got out, we ate lunch, and then I was here till about 5.30 or something trying to get everything done so that I could be gone. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you know how that goes. Oh, yeah. You got to take time now to save time later. I understand. Uh, but this weekend, lots of of high school athletics were on the schedule um, up in Edmond. Small school baseball tournament still going on. Finals are today. Uh, Canoe Trojans sounded like Saturday night's game was a wild one uh, against Laverne, in which Canute held on to win 6-5, then yesterday fell to Sterling 7-3. Uh, I'm sure you have some in more info than I do. Do you have any idea what happened? Well, that I'm, thing was happening at the same time I was playing yeah. a championship, or my kids were playing a championship game. So I was kind of. I know Laverne. It yeah. sounded like Laverne had. Oh, a, the Laverne one. The, the Laver- Laverne. One? Laverne had a guy that just was shoving him on the mound up four nothing. Yeah. And then it's one of those situations where I think Laverne was trying to look at big picture. Right. For pitching, for saving right. pitching. And then when that happened, Canute was able to come back and, and eliminate a 4 nothing deficit. Then in the final inning, a little bit of the same thing. Where Taylor was trying to save an arm. Yeah. Oh, you know? yeah. <laughs> well, we were kind of, me and others were texting each other. And during that, as that was happening, you know, I was in the garage, had it on Game Changer, the, you know, just the stat stream, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, we were all kind of wondering, well, what kind of arms are they going to have left? And it turned out doing the math, they actually had some arms left. But. It 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 felt like that a lot of ga- like a lot of uh, planning ahead and everything. But as far as the you know, it was two to nothing forever, and then, um, and then you know, got later in the game, and then uh, it went at what four nothing, and then 
Canute came back, tied it, actually took a lead at 5-4. Laverne tied it 5-5. Canute will wind up winning. But I just knew that, you know, I kept thinking, well, the bats are going to come alive. They're eventually going to come alive, and they did. Uh, But my worry was the arms uh, moving forward. They gave a great effort yesterday. That score wasn't – it was 4-3 going into the seventh against – um, what? Who was Sterling? It? Sterling. I almost said Shattuck. I still have softball in my mind. Sterling and um, um, just uh, had a bad seventh inning. Didn't have a chance in the bottom of the seventh. But um, yeah, I mean, great, e- great effort from the guys and uh, good job, Coach uh, Varnell, and, and yet another state tournament appearance. And and it's becoming the norm over there in Canute for baseball to get into the state tournament. And it's almost to the point of you know, I was talking to uh, another Canutian afterwards like man you know it's great hey they got their top four that they got semifinal and she said well, that's not we want we don't want that and I'm like well that's just kind of the standard that coach Gillette kind of set and they're still setting that standard by getting to the state tournament but again congratulations to the Canute uh, baseball squad and coach Varnell and his seniors um on that showing this yeah, past weekend that's uh those seniors seven state tournaments out of eight possible and it's really seven possible because the eighth was the COVID year Right. In the spring. So they weren't able they to make that. Yeah. One. one state once was runner up once, 183 and 40. The record for four years for those guys uh, that are graduating this year from Canute Baseball. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, tons and tons and tons of success uh, over there right now and see how long they can keep it rolling down the tracks uh, there at Canute. You've got 4A baseball. We were here on Friday. Finishing up that regional at Elk City. Mount St. Mary defeated Chickasha, which I think that was a little bit of a surprise for a lot of people Mm -hmm. that the opponent was Mount St. Mary. And, man, talk about running out of arms. Gosh, Mount St. Mary definitely did that. Uh, uh, The big lefty gave a a really fine effort. You could just tell, you know, the gas was out of the tank. Uh, And then for the Elks, catch Geno. Just a little bit of a struggle early in the first inning. Uh, with with getting the ball in the strike zone, but man, that six four three double play with what the bases loaded, I think, if I remember right, bases loaded and nobody out. I can't. Or remember. maybe second, maybe first I think and it was third. First and third. Nah, but they didn't. But they scored and they scored on the single. Yeah, yeah. So it so it couldn't have been. It may have just been first and second, uh, and nobody out. And that that may have been what it was after that after the RBI single. First and second, nobody out. Then you roll a double play. Then you get a strikeout, and only limit that damage to one to one run. Uh, and after that, catch was awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, Big Elk pitching in the playoffs so far has been awesome. Uh, through what five games, they've given up one run in five games. That's, I mean, that's that's something that's really something. good. That's, really, really good. We're saying it during the broadcast. It's not just a the pitching it has to come alive for this run that they're about to go on in, in the state tournament. And that was a good indication that it could be in the regional. You didn't rely on one arm and then eke out other wins. It was dominant and that's where it started. It was dominant on the mound all three games in my opinion. So we know through the grapevine what's happening. Uh there's not an official state tournament bracket posted just yet, but we do know uh, what's going to be happening. So the 4A tournament's going to be at Edmond Memorial on Thursday and Friday. The finals will be at Bricktown on Saturday. Elk City will play the 130 game on Thursday in the quarterfinals. Uh, they do not know the opponent yet. That, that game has to be played, finish up a regional over in far eastern Oklahoma today, Ulaga and Salisaw. We're playing the if necessary game today. They didn't play yesterday. They went ahead and played, skipped yesterday. And so That's what the, threw me last night. Yeah. When I, I forgot. I didn't realize. Oh, that pushed. That made an if necessary game. That's correct. Gotcha. Yeah. So, so Ulaga beat Salisaw thirteen to three on Saturday. That that created an if necessary game. So that game will be today. Whoever wins will play the Elks at one thirty on Thursday at Edmond Memorial. Um, and then, of course, you've got. The semifinals, if you're able to win that one, it's going to be at 4 o'clock. So 4 o'clock for the semifinals on Friday, and then the the championship game would be Saturday at 5. We'll have an official bracket, I'm sure, uh, soon. If not, at the very latest, tomorrow or tonight, once that game gets finished uh, over in eastern Oklahoma. Uh, but it, this is an interesting question. 
uh, from the text line, who starts game one on the hill for the Elks? I always go back to um, when Canute won their last state title, that question was brought up because they had an ace of a pitcher in Kellen Henderson. And the question was, would he, would Gillette save him for the f- potential finals or go? And before we could even finish the sentence, we got a text said, going with best available. And, and I think that's kind of the rule of the, the rule there is, is they go with the best of it. My, I just assume uh, we would just, so based on that, I'd assume cash, but, but like I said earlier though, those other guys were no slouches on the mound, but now, you don't want to play the what if game. You don't want to go, you don't want to get yourself in a bind and then have to bring someone off the bench. So, I mean, I'm only speculating. I can't, I'm not trying to say this is what I think will happen, but I, I, I would think cash, but, but man, you'd love to have him on Saturday. What about you? What would, what do yeah, you I don't. I don't think it's as much Saturday as Friday. I mean, there's no way. There's there's no way that Jay would risk getting beat in the, either one of the first two games to have him on Saturday. That's not going to happen. I understand. Yeah, absolutely not. But I do think here. Here's the thing. I think it's tempting, and it, and it's it's tempting because of how good Cooper has been. And how good Cooper was in the semifinals against Tuttle last year. He was phenomenal. It's tempting to think to yourself, okay, Tuttle, it could be the, they could be the semifinal opponent again. They've got to get past Fort Gibson, though, which you got to watch out, right? Fort Gibson's good. they got a kid that's going to go to OSU. It's tempting to think, okay, Tuttle hasn't seen cash. Cooper has been awesome. And, you, and and I think it makes it it makes it a conversation and it makes a little bit of a um, you can see it you can see the the idea because Cooper has been so good that's a big part of why it's a conversation right mm-hmm. at the same time do you risk being the team that had <clears throat> Cash Mayfield on the pine and losing. I don't think Jay's going to do that. I don't know. I know. There's, I mean, there's, there's, a, there's, there's, there's reasons to look, see both sides. Mm-hmm. But I think at the end of the day, the one thing that you, the the one thing you do not want to do, is lose without your best arm out there. Because you know what you can't do on Friday, you can't play if you don't win on Thursday. That's right. But it'll be interesting to see. It that's really that, will that's be. That's that what if you're talking about. Yeah. You don't want to say what if, man. What if I did this? I mean, what in if, a perfect. What if they did listen, that? Listen, in or, a perfect world, you would you would have cash in game two. Because you feel like, at least me, and this is just me talking, but when you look at records of the teams that would, Fort Gibson or Tuttle have been better than either one of Ulaga or Salisaw, at least so far. You know what I mean? Just as a as a mm-hmm. season, but I would I would fully expect to see twenty one on the bump on Thursday. Tell you what, I'm just glad that I'm not the guy who has to make that decision. <laughs> yeah. Jay Max going to probably lose a lot of sleep or not get enough of it this week. <laughs> Eat guy. something, Jay. <laughs> right? I'm already I'm already I'm have to be like texting him throughout the week. Eat something. We might need to. What do you call that? Create a uh, a meal train for him? <laughs> yes, <laughs> and make him. You had to force him to eat it, though. <laughs> yeah. No, that's I, the one thing about it is if you go that route, no one says a word. Yep. And because you can't. So yeah, I mean, it, but it is a dilemma. There's no doubt about it. It, it. it is an it is a dilemma, because your big picture mind is trying to figure out how to win the whole thing. Which is a good thing to be able to have that thought and have that conversation because the Elks have been that good. So mm-hmm. uh, it's going to be fun. It's yep. going to be a fun week. There's, there's no be. doubt about yep. it. It's going to be a fun week. Not only and then like today, I can't wait to get over to Weatherford uh, for the for the golf, the four A golf. Um, the Elks have day a, one of two. Is that right? Day one of two. Okay. Two rounds today. So that means probably first update. Hopefully they'll be through nine holes. 
Uh, the tee times were stretched out from about 8.30 to 9 uh, for Elk City. Teeing off number, let's see, they teed off number 10. So they'll play in the back nine. Hopefully, uh, by the time I get there, a lot of the a lot of the front nine scores will be done, and then you can kind of give you an open and a, hey, here's how the Oaks did on the front nine. Oak City's going to have a great chance. Uh, if Phil, you know, familiar with the course, so the, it's going to be fun to watch that. And then a dream scenario would be Oklahoma Christian right there with them because that means Ryder Cowan, former Elk City, and that moved years ago now doesn't even you know, but he's there. Uh, one of the one of the top junior golfers in in Oklahoma. Uh, so that's a, a it's going to be a, uh, a a fun race to see uh, those guys battling it out for the top spot as the Elks have uh, really kind of rounded into form here over the last couple of weeks. Uh, senior Mason Schmidt has been awesome. Um, two rounds in a row in the mid 60s with a 66 at Hefter North, and then follow that up first round at Regionals last week at Kingfisher with 64. Um, that's as good a golf as he's played in his entire life, or right here at the perfect time. Mm. Uh, we know what Nate Womack can do uh, as the runner-up last year up at Boiling Springs individually. You know, those guys, is it, the, the key to the whole thing is for those guys not to force it. Just right. go play how you go play. Uh, and then we'll, we'll see where the chips fall from there. But that, it's going to be a really fun event to see um, that, that race for the 4A Boys State Golf Championship started just right now. It's going on over there in Weatherford. Monday morning, last week of school. I'm afraid of Wyatt Compton's already decided school's over. we got another week after this. Oh, do you really? Yeah. But most of the heavy testing is done. Yeah. You know what it's I mean? kind of last week and the week before. It's just kind of like, I don't know what they do now, but it's but they're the same way. And so are me and Mom. We didn't do a lot. We didn't really do good hair this morning. <laughs> All right, ponytail, just go. <laughs> Move on. All right, uh, girls' state tennis tournament was this weekend. McKinley Brewer. We know her. It's Landry's daughter. Okay. She was seventh in number one singles. Congratulations to her as the girls' tennis team. Competed in the state tournament. Track, man, Will on their text line. So the the four by one hundred meter relay for Elk City had been dominant all season long, uh, close to setting school records. Had had the fastest time in the state at one point, uh, just dominated. And Devin Simmons unfortunately pulled his hamstring. Ah, and so darn it, you know the chances there went right out the window. That's it just you know terrible luck for that to happen when it happened with those guys. Um, who would who would, were looking to to do things that never been done here? Quite honestly, as far as the the speed that they were running that race with, so that really that really stinks uh, that 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 happened when it happened. Um, I know we we got that text from from Daniel that Cooper Garbarino was third in pole vault and he just picked it up this track season, so that's promising for next year, obviously, uh, for him to continue to get better at that. So you know just. Uh, Man, it, it just kind of le- le- leaves a little bit of a sour taste in your mouth, right? If you're, you know, wanting to see those guys get to the level that it looked like they might be able to get to with that relay, mm-hmm. and then it just didn't happen. You know, it just went. Unfortunately, it just went away uh, there with a with that injury. Um, I'm efforting results for smaller schools yeah looking at looking here uh cooper Patton looks like he was fourth in the uh, 100 uh, meter for the time of 10.98 uh jack morgan was fourth in the 3200 with the time of with the time of 10 minutes 13 seconds 13.82 seconds I uh, was mentioned Garbo was third in the, in the pole vault for the boys. Remy Murray was third in the girls' pole vault, jumping 10 6. And then uh, da, 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 that's the one that, that was the, the finishers that scored points in the state track meet for Elk City, uh, boys and girls in class 4A. 
Uh, and by the way, if anyone wants to text in results, I know there's a yeah. ton of them with the small school. It's, I mean, it's almost impossible to get them all, but uh, text them in. But uh, the ones I got uh, over at Ham and Grace Crabshaw, she finished fifth in the 400 meter dash. And Canute put a team, uh, the 4x100, that finished third. Yeah, Kylie finished third. Kylie Smith was third in the 100. A team of uh, Kim Harris, Destiny Jackson, Malia DeGarmo, and Kylie Smith. Finished third on that one. That was on Saturday. Kylie finished fourth in the 200. There's a lots of those. <laughs> yeah, there, there are a ton. <laughs> There's lots of that. They did, yeah, there's a uh, – we want to get them all the best we can. Absolutely. But that's what um, I found on the fly. Soccer's tomorrow. Is that right? May 9th. Today's the 8th, right? Today is the 8th. Yeah, so soccer tomorrow. Uh, Clinton will travel to Metro Christian and 4A Boys. And then you've got Hildale and Bethany. The other semifinal there in 4A boys. On the girls' side in 4A, Woodward hosts Metro, Weatherford heads to Holland Hall. And those would be the two semifinals in Class 4A on the girls' side for the soccer. Man, it's amazing that we're here. I mean, one week. This is the last week. And then we'll be done with another year of high school sports. We'll be looking ahead to the Elk City Spring game. Did you know there was such a thing? Football? Yeah. No. When? Thursday before Memorial Day. So like the 25th maybe? That would be Memorial Day is the 29th. So yeah, 25th. Okay. Also, speaking of football. We can do that. Athletics. I have no idea. I just know what it is. I saw Zach the other day. Are they going to have a weird scoring system like uh, every man, other spring game in college? I was trying to remember. It seemed like maybe we were playing somebody, but surely not. I don't remember. I don't know. i got so much in my head right now uh, for different things. Uh, How about we just go and be fans for once? Yeah, that's what I want to do. Uh, <laughs> timing wise, hey, tonight, speaking of athletics in Elk City, tonight, 6 to 8.30, if you are going to play school sports in the brown and white next year, you can go get a physical tonight, 6 o'clock, Pioneer Center, 6th graders through 12th graders. Go up there, 6 o'clock at the Pioneer Center gym. Go get you a physical so that you can compete for the Junior Elks, for the Big Elks, for the Elkats, for the Junior Elkats. That will be this evening at the Pioneer Center gym. Don't forget, starting about 11, BigElkTV.com, I'll be over at Weatherford at Prairie West Golf Course to give you updates from the Class 4A Boys State Golf Tournament. 36 holes today, 18 tomorrow. See if the Elks can have individuals and team success. Uh, we'll be there, gosh. 11 o'clock will be probably the first update all the way through 6 or 7 tonight, depending on when things wrap up after 36 holes tonight. So you can tune in kind of top of the hour on Big Elk TV to see those video updates. Joining us now, it will be the voice you hear at 2 o'clock right here on these airwaves. It's the ultimate Jim Traber. Jim, how are you? I'm good, fellas. Uh, is Elk City good in golf? Uh, yes. A couple of guys that are seniors. One's going to go play uh, Division Two golf in – Missouri, another kid is last is last, two of his last three rounds have been 66, 64. So they uh, they'll have a chance if they play well. But an, another guy that grew up here uh, and then moved uh, to the city for his parents for job reasons, uh, Ryder Cowan, uh, he is already he's going to OU next year. He's uh, fantastic. Uh, he'd be nice to still have on our side uh, this week. Uh, but instead, he's up there with at Oklahoma Christian Schools. So that'll be, you know, those two teams and a couple others are probably uh, where the state champion will come out of. Very nice, very nice. Well, the weather's beautiful, so should be uh, should be some great golf, great golf. No doubt about it. Hey, I want to start with what happened at the end of last week, and it's something that's a big topic of conversation here. 
uh, with with the sports gambling. And I, Jared and I were talking Friday with the Alabama thing that is happening, and now a lot of come out with their coach being in direct contact with a guy uh, that's making those bets. I submit to you, Jim, that the reason that he got caught is because it was legal and the regulators are able to track that stuff down easier than if it would have been making illegal bets. What do you think? Oh, I mean, I, you could be right, but I don't – I mean – how many times, I mean, so in other words, what you're saying, think about this, think about this. What you're saying is, is that you'd rather have somebody do something illegally than legally. <laughs> yeah, I mean. I mean, think about that. Yeah. That's what you're, you're, you're on your program here in wonderful Elk City telling everybody <laughs> that you want it to be illegal and not legal. Because no. if it is illegal, they're going to gamble. Maybe not as much. I mean, there's probably people listening to this show right now that, you know, uh, like to bet on sports. And if it becomes legal, um, they'll probably do it, whereas when they wouldn't do it, illegal. And what, closest, I mean, I would think, I'm, I don't know if Lucky Star in uh, Clinton would um, do gambling, I'm not sure. But there's going to be a place in near close to Elk City that they'll be able to gamble. Instead, they're going to do it like with bookies and stuff. So I understand what you're saying. It could be right, but I don't know. I'm, look, so here's the deal. We've had gambling now in a bunch of different states legally, and it's been going on for a while now. And this is the one thing that we've seen happen? Right. That some idiot coach was on the phone with a friend of his um, and telling him that, hey, I'm not going to, well, I guess, I guess he told him that the pitcher's not going to start. They bet 50 grand. By the way, this is Ohio's gambling place's fault. Correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't that the only bet that was made on this game? There was only one bet made on this game, and it was for fifty thousand dollars. Now I don't know about you, but if I'm taking a bet for fifty thousand on LSU Alabama, I'm going to call my supervisor over and go, "Hey, you know, before I take this bet, this is a little bit ridiculous." What I'm trying to say is, is that this bet could have not gotten down. They still, he still would have gotten in trouble, probably. They still would have figured it out. But uh, I just don't think that they did a good enough job with it, really. Yeah, it's, I think where, wasn't he at the Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati where he made that bet? Was that it? Because I don't, I don't know. So he was not at a casino. No, it was, I, it was at the, it was at the baseball stadium. Yeah, I think he was at the baseball stadium where he made the bet. And I, I got to thinking, wow. is he doing that online, or is do they have some kind of kiosk in there? Surely not. I don't. I mean, I would, I'd find it hard to believe at a baseball stadium you could do it, but with all the different amenities, maybe there is some sort of, you know, a casino level or something uh, around there somewhere. Well, that's, that's one of the things that everybody's talked about. I mean, they're talking about, in, in, you know, in Oklahoma City at the Thunder Games being able to bet on the game. Yeah. So can, I don't know if it's online or if there's some, like you said, a kiosk. I don't know. You've been to Vegas. Can you, do you know, can they bet at Raiders games? I've never been to a Raiders game. Right. You but haven't heard or anything? I don't I don't I don't know. I have not no, I haven't heard. I do know there's arenas right now that you can bet though. In states that gamble is that legal, gambling is legal, you can bet in the arenas. You know, you can sit there in your seat and go online and bet. So um I'm with Cat Jack. Cat Jack has a uh he's online and wherever he is, if it's legal, he can bet whatever game he wants to bet. Yeah. So I you know, it's but I don't know, though, Skinny. I mean, it's a nice stretch that you're making, but I just—it's the first time that we've had anything like this happen. No, no, I, I'm know? saying it, I'm saying he got caught because it was legal. And, and right? No, no, no. That's, yeah, I know. Yeah, and, and I mean, but, for the people that are worried about the the games being being fixed or whatever as as a reason to not have legal gambling, I think this. Prove that ought to help prove that hey, even if it is, it gets caught. You know, you know, it doesn't just carry on and on and on through to to oblivion. No, that's a good point. You're right, but I, you know, I'll tell you this though: uh, if I didn't want to get caught, I could find a bookie. Yeah, I mean, there's still bookies out there. Um, I don't know this. This coach is an idiot. I don't know why he did this. I don't know why he was involved in it. it sounds like. He might have been a little bit more innocent than we think, you know, but he should have known better. Can't tell some dude. Like, in other words, I don't think he called this dude up and said, hey, I'm, not, I'm scratching the pitcher. Go bet on LSU. Right. But I do think he was talking to one of his buddies and said, hey, you know, we, uh, we're going to scratch this pitcher. 
And I think that dude took advantage of it. And you can't do that. You can't tell people that kind of stuff, no matter how close they are to you. Uh, what did you think about the Kentucky Derby? Uh, it, it was fun race, uh, but some really bad things surrounding it with with those horses that had to be that had to be put down there that weekend. It's the first Kentucky Derby that I didn't put any money on in a long time. It's the first Kentucky Derby that I didn't watch in a long time. Uh, I was in the middle of playing poker. Um, I I could have had him turn the television on. I was actually it was during a dinner. It was during the dinner break, and we were at uh, Roma's Italian down there in Durant. Mm-hmm. And um, the softball game was on, and I got up and I thought, man, should I put the uh, should I put the uh, Kentucky Derby on? I said no. I mean, when you lose all these horses and all this other stuff, it just the ho- it just didn't seem the same. And there are obviously problems going on with it. So. Different problems horse racing for a long period of time now. Um, but anyway, it really didn't do that much for me like it normally does, guys. It really didn't. I honestly forgot it was even on, but I was so hooked up with other things. Hey, NBA playoffs I had a couple of really good games yesterday. Suddenly we have two series that I thought were going to go one way. They're suddenly tied. We'll start with uh, over in the Eastern Conference. Harden was awesome in that win against the Celtics. What's your reaction to that? He's been playing really, really good. Yeah, you know, game one, he was amazing. Game two, he stunk it up. And that was when MB came back. But this game, he was just unbelievable. Big shots that he hit. Um, I'm in, I mean, I've been impressed with him. I really have. He's, it's, it's like he kind of changed his body and he changed his mind. And, um, and he's playing really, really well. And, uh, I, you know, I think it's going uh, to be a great series from here on out. Um, I still think Boston's a better team. But I don't know, this coach, guys, I don't know if he. Uh, I don't know if he always makes the best decisions. I'm, I'm not real. If I was doing a radio show in Boston, I think I might be ripping on the guy a little bit. Yeah, I, I don't mind the timeout when it's tied at the end of regulation, or not calling the timeout. But man, when you're down one like that, and the way it kind of scrambled around there, at some point I think even though it's what you do, you have to change and, and try to give yourself your your team the best chance. Uh, to generate a good shot in that situation. Yeah, I mean, I think I think I'd have probably called the timeout, but I don't know. I mean, you know, we always nitpick and stuff. You give it up to Philly; they made the plays when they had to, and this is going to be a great series. There's still a lot of great basketball left. Matter of fact, we got a lot of good series going on. It did feel like in the fourth quarter that maybe uh, Boston found a little something. Al Horford was awesome on Embiid. I think he was only one for six. In the fourth quarter, he blocked three of his five shots against Embiid in that fourth quarter. Is that something how, – how does – is that just Horford playing great or is that a sign that maybe Embiid is either not quite back in tip-top shape after the injury or maybe that knee's still bothering him a little bit? I think the knee bothers him. I mean, I give it up to Horford. I mean, it was impressive, but I think it's bothering him. I really do. He's not 100%. I just don't know how he's going to make a big long run through this thing. Now they do have a decent amount. If they, well, if they go seven, it won't be as. But but they do have some time in between the next series. Um, but I think don't. I mean, MB just he just doesn't. I mean, the guy can still play, obviously, but he just doesn't look like he totally looks. And I think why when the game gets late, you know, it starts to wear out that leg a little bit. And I think that it probably messed with it. But I give it up to Horford. I just think that uh, I just think the injury has something to do with it too. What? have the Suns done to to even it up? And what have they changed to suddenly look like a, a totally different team than what they did for, going back to game one? I don't know if it's... I mean, the bench scored. I mean, you know, I mean, first of all, Booker... I texted Matt Ravis last night. I said, Booker... I think Booker is playing his way into one of the top five players in the league. I mean, I, I, this is unbelievable what he's doing. I don't care just about scoring points. The efficiency is beyond belief. Yeah. I mean, he's shooting like 57% in the playoffs from three. 60-something from the floor. And he's not a big man. It's not like he's getting layups. He, he is just absolutely incredible. And then last night, Durant had his best game as far as efficiency was concerned. So I just think they played better. And when you usually do play better at home. And then Landry Shamit, my gosh. I mean, those threes he hit were massive. He scored 19. Terrence Ross did some things. You know, neither one of these teams have great benches, but if the benches play well, 
well, then they're probably going to have a chance to win the game. So, this series, man, I am, this series is great. Was that not a great game? I'll tell you this, too. I heard uh, Stephen A. Smith say this earlier today, and I, I kind of agree with him. I think that they're better without Chris Paul. I know that sounds crazy because I just talked about their bench, but I think Chris Paul slows it down. Yep. I think they're running a lot more without Chris Paul. So I, I don't know, man. But those two, it, it isn't, isn't it amazing how almost all of these teams have like two super superstars, you know, that are left. Almost all of them, not every one of them, but almost all of them have two superstars. Everyone in the West, right? Every team in the West has two superstars that that can light it up. Yeah, it's fun, it's fun stuff. Really fun. But I, you know, I look. I still think this this could go all the way down to seven two. I give it up to Phoenix. But notice I haven't yet mentioned Jokic yet. Right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I said this last week. I don't know if you guys heard me say it on. Every single time he walks into the arena, he's the worst athlete. <laughs> yeah, walk I heard that. <laughs> Is that amazing? Yes. I mean, just think about that. When he walks on the floor, every single game he's the worst athlete there is. And he just goes out and dominates. He's unstoppable. You can't stop the guy. It's absolutely amazing. Unless you're the Suns owner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I was just gonna say <laughs> that is absolutely ridiculous. Ishbia, that's his name, right? Yeah. That is absolutely ridiculous what that guy did. First of all, he didn't deserve a technical. And secondly, they better not do anything else to Jokic. All he's trying to do is get the ball, and this dude's holding on to the ball. And then he flopped like he was in a daggone WWE uh, uh, match. I mean, it was ridiculous how he went down. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. Jokic deserved no I, – I will say this. You know, you got to give it up to the owner because he, he got his team a point by doing that. Right? He shot a, a free throw and because of the technical. But he's holding on to the ball. He knows. Everybody knows. Jokic wants to run the break. They want to go. So I thought that was absolutely ludicrous. And then I heard somebody after the game ask Malone, well, I mean, does it matter? You know, it's the owner. And he said, I don't give a blank. And that's true. Yeah. Once you're sitting down on the floor, you're just a, you're a person. You don't get any different rights. Because you own the team, you're allowed to walk out on the court and tell somebody something. So I, I just thought that was, I thought that was a little bit ridiculous. But Jokic was absolutely amazing. Just not enough, man. Just not enough uh, because the other two guys were even more amazing. Yeah, Jokic, 53. That's the fourth most in a loss in playoff history. It's the most in a regular, uh, regulation playoff loss. It was the second most by a center in a loss. Only Wilt scoring 56 in a loss in the playoffs. And then you, you mentioned Booker and how incredible he's been. So he's 79% over the last two games, 34 of 43 from the floor. That's the highest percentage in a two-game span in, play, in postseason history by someone that's not a center. Essentially, I mean that that is n- that is nuts, uh, and I think you, I think you make a great point, or Stephen A. made a great point. It does feel like after Chris Paul has been uh, has been out of the lineup, Phoenix is they're just unleashing Booker and Durant, and maybe that even helps uh, those other guys as well. But as we've seen for years, Jim, the the bench can play a lot of times at home. Now, can they play well enough in Denver to steal one and get this back with the Suns a chance to win in Game Six? Well, it's going to be hard. I mean, because you know, I always talk about that altitude too. You know, you, you you're in Phoenix, and then you get on you get you get on that plane, and you go to Denver, and it's a lot different in that altitude, a lot different. Um, but yeah, back to Booker. By the way, he's been playing point guard. Yeah. Too. What's he got? Eighteen assists in the last two games, um, or twenty maybe. He he just. I mean, it's it's absolutely incredible what this guy's doing. And, you know, they're talking about him. Brian Windhorst this morning was talking about him with Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. Now, you got to keep doing it, you know, in the in the later games. But he's on his, he's on his, he's on pace right now to have the greatest playoff run of all time. Now you got to keep winning. You got to keep doing it. But, um, yeah, it, it's been some great individual performances. I mean, just all over the league. You know, I mean, on every, every you mentioned Harden. You got Jimmy Butler when he's healthy. He's absolutely amazing. Um, obviously, you know, Anthony Davis every other game. Yeah. It, it, it really is impressive what's happening in the league. Can't wait. Can't wait for the nighttime so I can watch some more. Yeah, Booker 47-9 and nine 
in a game three win, and then 36 and 12. So 21 assists to go along 21. with, what, 83 points on 80% shooting. <laughs> it's, that's, that's, that, that's just awesome. Uh, I, think about, he's, I think he's, he scored 36, and, and his scoring, his average went down. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what about tonight? Uh, you know, Miami and New York, it's, it's almost like the odd little stepchild of the series because it's hard to watch. It's not nearly as fun as, as the rest of these. Um, but it, you know what? It took all year long, but it does feel like the Heat have, have kind of figured this thing out, and maybe they're the team that I know you thought they were going to be uh, at the first of the season. Yeah, I definitely. I mean, I definitely thought they would be better. That's why I picked them to win the East. Um, but yeah, it's it's this series is really hard to watch compared to all the other series. But it's a good series. Um, you know, I think that the uh, the Knicks the Knicks are very up and down, and then you know the Heat goes as Butler goes. Right? I mean, it's that simple. When Butler doesn't play, they have no chance, and then Butler. That's like the ninth straight game that Butler scored over 25 points in the playoffs or something like that. He's he's been incredible. He is uh, <clears throat> he's a gamer, fellas, and I like it that he plays defense too. So very uh, very impressive, very impressive, and I I'll keep watching it, but I'm I can't wait for the second game a whole bunch more than the first one. Yeah, you mentioned Anthony Davis. It's it's really weird what how it's literally every other game. So tonight sets up for a bad one. You know, we haven't seen Le- – LeBron's been doing everything, but we haven't seen just that nuclear game from him as far as scoring-wise. Do you think they need that out of him tonight? And, and what does what does Golden State do? You know, they I think the last series – that last uh, round, they set the record. They've won, a, they've won a road game in 28 straight series, and they're going to have to do it again in order to, to end up getting out of this semifinal. It's tonight the night where we see, okay – the Warriors and their their championship medal shine through. I would say yes, um, and I think you know Anthony Davis fifty eight percent in odd games, forty two percent in even games, twenty eight points in odd games, thirteen points in even games. I mean, I don't know. It just keeps on going like that. So I'm going to go ahead and say yes. This is a game I think that he doesn't play as well. As far as LeBron's concerned, I don't know if the guy can't have a nuclear game. I mean, I know he had one last series, but he looks like he's kind of managing his time a little bit, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and seriously, at the start of the games, I think he just kind of eases into it. Kind of like, you know, when you're old like me, it takes you a while to get off the couch or get out of bed. It's like that's that's kind of what's happening with him. But, uh, yeah, he um, – I – I think that Golden State wins and we go back tied and then the three-game series. I think I think that's exactly what's going to happen tonight. Well, I picked the Lakers so to uh, get to the conference finals, so I'm going to have to go against you on that one. Good hey, pick, man. <laughs> you're, you're, they're looking good. I feel good about it. Did, did you watch um, – you mentioned there's some soft, softball on, and the only reason I bring it up because we had Bedlam softball over the weekend, uh, three games won by OU. What a but domination, were, dude. Yeah. What yeah. an unbelievable – I mean, that – I mean, first of all, game one, how can you ask for anything better in Oklahoma State? Go deep, three-run bomb in the first inning. How can you ask for it? Home, everything's wonderful. Doesn't matter. Then game two, this pitcher just shoves it you-know-where on OU for, what, six and whatever. Doesn't matter. And then, of course, game three is the way they normally play. So just abuse. They are unbeatable. I, I don't know how anybody, I don't know how anybody is going to beat them, especially because you have to beat them in a three-game series. And I know that uh, OSU's thinking two games in a row they're going to win, two different ones. And they don't win either one of them. That's, that's a sign of a great team, man. That's what it is. You know, I always talk about it's, it's the great, great teams win when they don't play the best. Great poker players, when they get bad cards, can still win. And it, it, it's the way it is in sports. And OU – Gets down three nothing. That's a huge. You know that fellas in softball. That's a huge number three nothing. And then what happens? They go three run bomb to tie it, end up winning, and then they, you know, oh you need OSU need. I didn't watch every minute of the games, but OSU needed to score more in game two to put a little more pressure. When you're only up one nothing on them, you know, that's a boom boom boom. Or was it two nothing? Whatever yeah, it was, yeah, two. you got to yeah two nothing. You got to score more. You got to score more. You got to get up like five nothing on OU. Then you might you might have a chance to beat them. 
You know, we saw this kind of last year, and then OSU won the Big 12 tournament. <clears throat> Oklahoma's 41 wins in a row. Would it not be the worst thing of all time if, if Oklahoma didn't catch a loss here before the regional start? I talk about this all the time, man, all the time. I do not want to have some big, long streak like that. I don't want to be an undefeated team. I just don't. I'd rather lose and feel some adversity. Best thing that could ever happen to OU is that they lose a game, let you know, in the Big Twelve tournament, and then they feel it again. And then you know, Patty Gasso. I know she has things to teach on, but there's nothing better than teaching than a loss. So yeah, I I think it'd be really important for them to lose a game. Not saying they can't just run all the way through, but I'd rather if I was there, I'd rather see a loss. I don't know. I don't know if they can lose. So. Well, it seemed to help them when they lost. Was that last year or two years ago when they lost that opening round in the World Series to uh, that team out of nowhere? James Madison. Or yeah. I think that was two years ago. James Madison with seemed, that pitch. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it seemed to, to take that pressure off of them. So, yeah, I agree with you. It wouldn't, wouldn't be a bad thing to, to see a loss before the World, uh, World Series. What about Big yeah, 12 baseball definitely. this weekend? Uh, Oklahoma State took the weekend off as far as playing inside the conference. Uh, and man, did they put on a show yesterday at the plate? You see what that young kid did? <laughs> yeah. uh, three home runs, two grand slams. Yeah, I'm telling you, man, he's a stud. I talked about him on the radio about a month ago. He is a stud. Um, they Nolan McLean coming back, so you know they. We'll see. I mean, they got to get some pitching, but um, they can hit, man. They can really, really, really hit. I don't know if they're going to get a regional at their plate because they've just lost too many games to people that they probably should have won. But um, they got a chance. I mean, if they can get some pitching, because they certainly can hit. Usually when you get in the playoff, though, usually early, you better, you better pitch. And then, and then later in the actual regional is when the pitching goes down, and then you better hit. But they can hit. We all know that. They just got to get some. The, uh, the Watts Brown kid, He's been kind of off here lately, a little sore arm and stuff, but he needs to get it back. And then Nolan McLean, both hitting and pitching, they need him. So having him back certainly helps. So we'll see. They're, I think they're pretty good, but I just don't know how good their pitching is going to take them. Yeah, important this weekend with Kansas State first at home. Those two teams tied for second, just a couple of games behind West Virginia, uh, who took through two or three from OU. Is that – does that surprise you at all that we look up at the top of the standings with just a couple of series left and we see West Virginia? It does, but I watched them play against OSU <laughs> on TV, and they, they got some players now. They definitely have some players. Uh, they're doing a good job up there. I don't even know the name of the day. One coach, to tell you the truth. But they're doing a really good job. And then, heck, Kansas State. The Kansas State tied for second is crazy. That's, uh, that's the dude who used to be at OU. Right? Oh, yeah, uh, Hughes, Pete Hughes. Yeah, oh, yeah. Pete Hughes. <laughs> That's right. So, so yeah. it's crazy to have those teams at the top when you've got Texas and OU and OSU and all these other ones. So I think OSU just needs to keep rolling. You know, they've lost, what, they've lost one game in the last about nine or ten. So they need to just keep on get gaining that momentum. So just beat up on Kane. You know, at least win two out of three, finish second. And then, uh, and then see what happens as you go into the, into uh, postseason play. All right, last one for me. Uh, we missed you last Monday to kind of recap the draft. I know listening to you, uh, you liked what you saw out of your Pittsburgh Steelers. I do. I love the Steelers draft. I really do. The trade up. Now we found out that Belichick wanted to uh, wanted to mess with the uh, Jets. That's beautiful. So the Steelers go up and get the the Jones kid, the offensive tackle from Georgia. And then the guy that everybody thought they would take when they were at number 17 uh, is is there at number 32 and Joey Porter Jr. They get him. I like the big tight end they got from Georgia. Uh, you know too. that kid that's 280 pounds? Yes. Um, I like that they got two kids from Wisconsin who are supposed to be really good. So I, I don't know. I just I love their draft. And I think you guys will know. I'll tell you the truth if I didn't love it. And I thought your Dallas Cowboys were drunk. Uh, I don't know. What, I don't know what the Dallas Cowboys were doing. I really don't. What this guy? They. I think they could have had him in the second round. You know, Maisie. But we'll see. He's a, he's a freak athlete. They say he's unbelievable as far as athletically and the things that he can do. 
It's just that nobody had him in the first round. So if you reach and he's great, then it's a great move, right? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. It's just too much Taco Charlton for me. It just reminds me of that exact same thing. And then you look behind him, you see uh, Brian Breezy from Clemson, who's sort of the same thing, who everybody knows who that guy is. And uh, I can just see this being the uh, the Taco versus TJ Watt draft all over again uh, when you reach for a guy. And maybe it's just because he's from Michigan and just because he's supposed to be a great athlete. But we saw yeah. how that we saw how that one worked out. Uh, for t- who, t- did, uh, who, who, t- who did uh, TJ? Who did who did who took TJ Watt that year? Yeah, I can't. It, it, somebody traded him to the Steelers, right? <laughs> is he? Uh, I don't know. Is he like a uh, number? Uh, what, maybe the number one defensive player in the entire league? It's a possibility. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, I don't know, man. Listen, the Cowboys have drafted better lately, though they have. Yeah, they I mean, have. They've, got, they've drafted a lot better lately. So we'll see. I didn't make it. Didn't make a lot of sense. So you lose your tight end. Everybody thinks they're going to type, take a tight end. That Mayer kid who, gosh, some people had earlier. They, I know he moved down, but maybe 12, 13, 15 in the draft, and he's sitting right there for you, and you don't take him. I, don't, I, don't, I just didn't understand that. Yeah. I mean, I think Dak, Dak needs some help. I, I couldn't agree more, and I really – even if you don't take him there, I would have loved to have had the guy you got in the second or third round. In the second round, I thought, okay, the big fella. yeah, the big fellow from Georgia – Thinking, man, Darnell Washington would look good. He he does everything you yeah. want him to do. Um, he can block, man. He's a great blocker. Catches it. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, the Steelers have Fire Fryermuth, who I mean, he's really good. Mm-hmm. I just think that they could not believe that he was there. Right. You know, they took. Sometimes when you're in the lower rounds, you know, second, third, fourth, fifth in that neighborhood, and you've got a, you know, let's say you've got a third round pick or a second round draft you know, on, on, on the guy you think he's a second rounder. And he's still there, like, in the middle of the third round. Well, sometimes you got to go, wait a minute now. I mean, this is ridiculous. We, so you take him. I think that's what the Steelers did with him. And then those two kids from uh, Wisconsin, man, they, they both look like they're players. So, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, that division is really tough that, that the Steelers are in. Some idiot at the table, poker table this weekend, Tried to tell me that the Browns are the best team in that division. Yeah, I said, okay, we'll see. <laughs> Hope you got his. In my opinion, point. I think they're the worst in the division. <laughs> yeah. but whatever. Uh, hey, hey, reminder: uh, uh, Elk City baseball made state, and a certain future right. maybe OSU player uh, is going to be pitching. When that happens, I'll send you a link so you can check him out. Sounds good. He, uh, he. I talked to, to uh, Tom. Ho- I mean, to uh, Josh Holiday about him, and he said he's really good. So. Really good. That's good stuff. Can he? He can hit too, right? Uh, up and down. He, he's kind of in a little bit of a, a slump in the regional this last weekend, but yeah, he can. When when it's just one of those things that kind of come and comes and goes. Um, and I say that I think he hit four hundred for the season, yeah. but uh, he struggled a little bit in the regional tournament um, this last weekend. Yeah, four hundred in high. I hit six sixty. Yeah, my exactly. Senior year in high yeah. School, so I, I don't. If you're a big time player, four hundred is ah, in high school. That's right. 400 in college is big league, but in high school, you better hit better than 400. So. All right, Jim. I know uh, that sounds stupid. You've got uh, Al, second second round of Al. Part two. Part two. Yeah, part one was amazing, and part two with Al Eschbeck again today on the Julian Jim Traber podcast. It is really, really, really good. So I think people, you need to tune in and listen to it. Julian Jim Traber podcast. All right, man. Thanks awesome. so much for joining us. Uh, we'll be listening to it, too. All right, fellas. See you guys. You bet. Thank you to the ultimate Jim Traber here this morning for joining us for a couple of minutes to break down kind of what's going on nationally and, you know, more of a statewide perspective than what we've got right here locally in western Oklahoma. And you know what we've got right here locally in western Oklahoma? Oh, we got a lot more than what people think. Boys golf. That's right. Big Elk TV. I'm about to head east. Yeah, I'll have some video updates, hopefully, when I get there. Man, you got a pretty day for it. Those guys will be kind of getting around through the front nine. We'll have you updated all day long in the Class 4A State Golf Tournament from Prairie West in Weatherford. Just log on to BigElkTV.com to see those. Thanks, everybody. Have a great Monday. You've been listening to the Skinny on Sports Podcast with Aaron Cow. Be sure to hit that subscribe button to get alerts of when the latest podcast is available. Thanks for listening. That ball is blistered to right. 
Wait!